Believing is all about living. How do you live your life? To believe in Christ means to live like mm -hmm. Christ, mm -hmm. to admire his values, to approach life situations as he would have. This is a good point, because as James said, even the demons believe and even shudder. But through the lessons of this quarter, we looked at Jesus and his mission to present to us a different reality of God and his engagement in our rescue. We learned that we have to leave our baggage and let God take care of us and change us completely for us not to be slaves to sin anymore. But what is this life about? How can we live like Jesus? Jesus lived a life driven and motivated by service for others. Not self-centered, but centered on others. Rare phenomenon nowadays. He had compassion for the crowds. He loved people. And it was obvious because constantly he was healing and he was doing good. And this was his way of fighting the devil. Okay, but what's for me in all this? Oh, well, okay. This is what we talked last week about. Dying to our own self. Jesus saw value in every human being and it was reflected in his principle love your neighbor and simply it means be sensitive to the needs of others and there was no a list of uh, qualifications to follow in determining who the neighbor in need is. Sometimes we think that the Old Testament had a different, less loving philosophy but the commandment to love your neighbor and to love the stranger is from Leviticus. The difference is that this time, Jesus showed how it's done. For example, the Son of God found pleasure, enjoyment, pure spiritual satisfaction from helping people, uh, healing people, doing act of goodness, even to the least deserving person. It was just streaming from his heart. Words can't describe or explain it, but when you struggle, you feel abandoned, when you are in pain, a little gesture of kindness makes such a difference. But we all have our own issues and struggles. There are other people that don't have problems. They should be the one helping, right? It's worth the time to go through all Jesus' encounters and personal experiences. His needs were always left behind. Everybody sooner or later has found out that somebody hates them for no reason, or unfortunately for some reason or probably have been called bad names by somebody or even have been abused of some sort. Our natural reaction is to strike back, to eliminate those people, to eliminate the threat, to hate those people back. After all, they're enemies. Jesus said that love supersedes bad attitude. Love is the right way to go. Negativity, hate are things that just don't exist in God. We can't force love. It's the fruit of the Holy Spirit working in us. But what we can do is cultivate it. Give it priority. Let it grow in us. Our well-being doesn't depend on others, but on God. If we leave this dependence, it changes the entire perspective. In every human being, we will see someone else like us, that struggles like us, even our worst enemy. Letting God's love act through us makes us experience something incredible, something much superior than anything else that we have experienced, and brings us much closer to God. Having said everything up to this moment, it bursts out a question. How can we, who are selfish by nature, love our neighbor unselfishly like Jesus did? The amazing experience of the apostles and uh, what the gospel is all about, the good news, is that people can change. Probably not suddenly, most likely gradually. But don't be discouraged if you're not 100% like Jesus. I choose to submit myself to Jesus every day and this is what changes my egocentric attitudes. Mm. And then one day I find myself with Christ living inside of me.